Hello and welcome. This is Algebra 2, Section 3.1a. Our goal today will be solving systems of equations graphically, and then we're going to classify these systems of equations as well. So what is, or what are systems of equations? Well, that's just two or more equations with the same variables. So like, for example, you could have something like this, y is equal to 2x plus 1, which is an equation of a line in that slope-intercept form. You could also have another equation like 3x minus 2y is equal to negative 2. That is in your standard form, but just notice that these both have an x and a y, and these both have an x and a y. So it has two equations, so one, two, with the same variables. So we both have y's and x's here. So systems of equations can be classified as inconsistent or consistent, independent or dependent. And we're going to specifically talk about systems of equations with two specific variables. That means we're just going to talk about lines and not planes and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about what is inconsistent mean. That just means there is no solution. And when you have two lines, no solution just means that they are never going to intersect, or in this case, they'll be parallel to each other. That will be inconsistent. So consistent means one or more solutions. So when I say consistent, it has one or more solutions. Now, usually we like the one where it's just one solution. So one solution will be where it crosses each other. It actually intersects each other. So this is where it is one solution. And then if we have more solutions, meaning it'll be infinite, it means that we'll have a line that looks like this. And then actually the another equation will be exactly the same line. So we'll have two lines that are identical, which means all of those solutions would be answers, or you would have infinite amount. So that's pretty rare because you just simplify it and it's the same equation. Now, what does independent versus dependent mean? Well, independent means it has exactly one solution, exactly one solution. And that is exactly the picture of intersection that we have in the consistent one. So if we cross like this, it has exactly one answer right there. Now, basically what happens is if it's inconsistent, it can't be either of those. If it's consistent, it has one solution right here, exactly one, or it has more solutions, which means in, meaning they're dependent upon each other. So in this case, it has an infinite amount of solutions. And again, that is an infinite sign, and that exactly is that picture from above where you have a line like so, and it's exactly the same line on top of each other. So our first example is for each system of linear equations shown, classify the system, uh, system as consistent dependent, consistent independent, or inconsistent, meaning there's no solutions. So we have this line and line, which they cross here and here. They're labeled L1 and L2. L1 is right here, L2 is here. So what we're going to do is look at those and determine what they are. Well, it's not inconsistent because there is a solution. It's right there. So this would be consistent, and we're going to say independent because it has exactly one solution. So we will make sure it has a solution, and then it has one solution. Now, it has this unique solution, and we're just going to label this point here, which is at negative 2 positive 2. So that would be my answer here, negative 2, positive 2. And we would make sure that is in parentheses. It's already there for us, though. But that is how we classify this. So another example, if you look at line 1 and line 2, it's actually the same exact line. So there is solution, so it's not that. So it is consistent, but it's dependent because they're the same line. So we would consider it consistent and dependent because it has a solution, that means consistent, and dependent means it has infinite amounts of solutions, which that would mean you would just say infinitely many solutions. So in this case, we look at the two lines right here. They do not cross each other. They appear to be parallel in this case, which means they're inconsistent. 
if it's inconsistent, let's go ahead and click that. So inconsistent, that means there is no solution because they will never cross. So inconsistent will always be no solution. Consistence means there is a solution and you just have to determine if it's a unique or infinitely many. And again, dependent means infinitely many and independent just means one single solution. So let's go ahead and graph our equations ourselves this time. So in this case, then we have to write a solution. So we're gonna graph this first one. And it's in this nice form of y equals mx plus b. So we have our plus b and our slope is negative one. Remember, there's always a one in front. So we have rise of negative one and over one. So it's actually going down one and right one. But we're gonna start plotting the point here. So we start plotting this two, that's our y-intercept. And then we go down one and to the right one, down one to the right one. And we can keep plotting all of those points because that's what our slope allows us to do. So go down one over one. So down one over one. And you keep doing that. And these are all of our points on that line. And then we can just simply draw that line as best we can. And you could write it so that it's like, hey, this is arrow, this is arrow here. So it keeps going forever in those directions. So now let's go ahead and graph our second one, which is in standard form. You could either put it in another form or you just create a nice XY table. I always like doing an XY table here and you can just plug in numbers, uh, see what you get. So like plug in zero, one, two, three, whatever you want. I'm just gonna do zero, one, three here. Because if you notice, if you plug in zero here, we get negative two y is equal to negative seven, which if you divide by negative two to the other side, we actually get 3.5 as our y-intercept, which you can go ahead and plot that, which is fine. So if I go zero and 3.5, that's somewhere about right there. And then if I do one, I plug in one here, we would subtract one over to the other side, which is negative eight and then divide by negative two, which gives us positive four. So at positive one, to one to the right, it's positive four, so it goes right there. And as you can see, it's already going this direction. So if we just click those two points, um, we actually are good to go. Um, as you can see, we can just kinda keep drawing that line here. And I didn't actually need this other one. You only need two points, and you can graph them on Alex very nicely. And we can notice that they do intersect right there, which is at negative one for my x value and three for my other one. So our solution for this system is that x is negative one and y is three. So remember, it's always x comma y. So I always first start with the x-axis and then do the y-axis. So let's do another example here. So we have y equals one third x plus one. Again, we can start with the positive one, which is our intercept, we go to plus one. And then we think about our rise over run. So one third is up one over three. So we go up one and then over one, two, three, and we put a dot and up one and over three, we put a dot. And you can go down one and to the left three as well. So down one, left three, because you can think of it as negative one over negative three as well. So if we go one up and three to the right, one up, three to the right, and then you can go down one and three to the left, and you can keep doing that. And then you'd have this lovely line that goes something like this. And again, I do have rulers. Alex does this very nicely, and you can rough sketch it as best as you can. So doing this next one here in green, we can make our little XY table here. So either do an XY table or you can solve for your intercept. Sometimes I like, because of this form is so nice, we plug in zero for our X value and we can plug in zero for our Y value. So we can find the Y intercept, which was when X is zero, and then we can find the X intercept when Y is zero. So if you think about it, when X is zero, this goes away and you have negative three Y is negative six. So then you just divide by this negative three to negative six, which is negative six divided by negative three is positive two. So that turns out to be really nice. Now, if I take zero and plug it in for y, this goes all away, and you're just left with x is equal to negative six. Well, if x is negative six, you have that point. So we have zero, two for that point, and negative six, zero. Remember, that's how you find your x, y intercepts, and you can plot those points. So you go to zero and up two, 
So you have that dot here and then negative six and then zero, which is right here. And notice if I draw these lines, it would look like they're parallel, which they are in fact parallel, which has no solution because they're parallel, meaning they're inconsistent. So you should go ahead and try this one, pause it, I'll have an answer shortly. So you should get that they're exactly the same line and you should have infinite solutions here. Okay, so we're gonna go to our calculator here, a TI-40, and we're gonna try and draw some stuff, or graph some stuff. So the first thing is we're gonna draw these two lines on the graph and calculator. And I'm using the TI-4 over here. So what we're going to do, because it's in this form y equals, we can actually graph all these calculators in the y equals form. So what we're going to do is click that y equals button, and we're going to type in this 2x minus 5. So 2, and then this is our variable button, so 2x minus 5. And that would be y1 is equal to 2x minus 5. Meaning it's just our first equation. That's why we can just say press enter. Then we want to do our second equation, which is negative 7x minus 6. Remember, use the negative symbol for negative 7. And then this is the variable button right here. So that's our x. And then we do minus button 6, because we're subtracting 6. Press enter. These are our two equations. What we're going to do then is we're graphing it, because we're using the graphing calculator. So press graph. And it should have two lines like this. Mine's in color, because it's the color edition. Um, yours may or may not be, but if you're using your Chromebook on the dashboard, it will be this color. The ones that I have in class are in the black and white, so you'll have to uh, just look at which ones they are. It doesn't really matter if there's color or not, but it does kind of show you which one is which. Now, the important part is they do intersect right there. Some of you might not see it depending on your calculator because you might have to zoom into your standard room. So zoom six will actually make sure it's in that standard window. Now we want to find our system solution, the solution to the system. So we're going to calculate it with CALC, which we want to press second, and CALC. Uh, we want to calculate where they intersect, so we're going to go five to get there. And now all we have to do is just press enter, 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 and it will give us our solution of zero, negative zero point so all we have to do is just like write x is equal to, and it's approximately, so you can use the approximate symbol, negative 0 point 1, 1, and then y is equal to about negative 5 point 2, 2. We're rounding to the nearest hundredth, so that's why we only have two decimal places. Sorry, I'm using my mouse here, so it's really hard to draw, draw with that. So what I want you to do is try to see if you could do this one on your own. I will tell you the answer in a moment. What I would do is I would go to back to y equals one to press clear for both of those to clear those out. And you go up and down arrow and then type those in. Hopefully you are going to pause this and try it. Um, you should get that you have negative 0.57 for your x value. So that's my x, and then you should get y is 6.57. So that would be my other answer. 